All right, another little B71, which is about tissue fluid, uh, which causes all kinds of problems. Even at um, A level, people um, get confused, I suppose, with this. So we're going to start off with the idea of capillaries. If you remember, capillaries are these very thin um, blood vessels, thinner than, than human hair, you know, extremely tiny. And the outside walls of these capillaries are just one cell thick. There we go. Now, of course, the capillary is, is a kind of three-dimensional thing. I just sliced through it here. So these are the outside walls, and they have little gaps in them. And here's the red blood cells. They're too big to squeeze through these gaps. But in fact, white blood cells can squeeze out of here. They, they tend to be quite flexible. But the main idea is that blood itself, apart from the red and white blood cells, is made of a liquid called plasma. A kind of watery fluid which would contain things like um, glucose and because be oxygen that's being transported as well in these uh, red blood cells. Now the blood is, let's, let's just imagine the blood is uh, coming this direction. The blood has come from arteries and it's under pressure. Remember that the artery, the, the, the pressure is high so as it comes into the capillary, it's not under massive pressure because that would just simply burst the capillary part but it's under some pressure and it tends to force liquid out of these gaps. It tends to force this um, fluid, it's called the tissue fluid, out through these gaps. Now the capillaries are sitting inside of tissue. This could be um, liver tissue, it could be muscle tissue, it could be the kidneys, no matter what it is. The idea is that the capillaries, these really thin little blood vessels that are able to get right up close to um, these cells. Now remember that um, one of the things these cells will be doing is respiration. Just write put respiration down. Remember aerobic respiration, there's glucose, there's oxygen. Well, they're gonna be using up glucose and oxygen pretty quickly. So, in other words, there's more glucose and oxygen, higher concentration of glucose and oxygen in the tissue fluid than there is in the cells. And of course, what that is telling us is that oxygen glucose will diffuse into these cells. The, uh, the products from um, aerobic respiration, carbon dioxide and water, we'll ignore the water, it doesn't matter too much what the water is doing, uh, but carbon dioxide is being produced in these cells. There is a higher concentration of carbon dioxide in these cells than in the tissue fluid around, and so carbon dioxide will tend to diffuse out, and it will actually diffuse back in to the capillaries. So as long as this tissue fluid, uh, sorry, as long as this plasma keeps flowing, high concentration of glucose and oxygen as it comes down, it will diffuse in, and substances like carbon dioxide, and if this was um, in the liver, also things like urea, are diffusing back in. The pressure at this end is nowhere near as high, because by the time it's reached there, most of it's been pushed through or most of the liquid has been pushed through by the higher pressure at one end. So at the other end of the, sometimes they're called capillary beds. Um, if I try and draw something out, imagine here's the artery. It splits into these smaller capillaries, kind of network like a big mesh or a net. And then by the time it comes to the other end, um, most of the, the blood, um, by the time it collects here, it would be mainly deoxygenated blood, I should have called probably called, called it blue, shouldn't I really? Never mind. Um, it picked up carbon dioxide, it's lost most of its oxygen. And of course, what what it sits in is an organ or, like I said, this might be a muscle, which is actually just made of all these little cells. But the difficult thing perhaps to, to imagine with this is that these cells are constantly surrounded by liquid called tissue fluid. We forget and we just think that these cells are kind of floating around, and of course that's not true. Now one last bit on here, since it's mentioned on the page, um, is to do with valves. Let's just draw somebody in. Oh dear, never mind. If you think of a typical person, the heart of course is somewhere up here. If you're pumping blood all the way down to well, every part of the body, you're pumping it down to your big toe and back up might be a distance of about two metres. That's, that's quite a big uh, distance really, particularly when you think that blood has got mass, um, you know, you've got about four or five litres of blood in your body, which is the same as maybe um, two or three big bottles of pop. So you know how much they weigh. Blood has got mass. And so as you're trying to pump it back, it will tend to 
uh, gravity will try and pull it back down. So what you have to do in order to stop that happening is in the veins where the blood isn't as, under as much pressure, you have to have valves. And they're doing the same, exactly the same job as in their heart. They're preventing the backflow of blood. And I can spell it. Preventing uh, blood black back black backflow. Preventing blood backflow. Preventing it going back the in the wrong direction.